Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning. <laughs> is here today to do a genuine review of the latest chapter of One Piece. One Piece chapter 744. That is 744 of One Piece. Wow. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, let me tell you the reasons why I'm doing this genuine review. Three reasons. The first reason is that when I did the live reaction yesterday, right here, if you didn't see it, I recommend you go see it. It is 30 minutes, but right here. And when I did my live reaction, I was actually in a rush because I had to go. And... The problem here was that because I was such because I was in a rush, I couldn't get all my thoughts out there. I couldn't say my piece on a few things I wanted to talk about. So even though I kind of discussed some things that are going on in the chapter in the middle of the live reaction, I still want to give like full on details about what happened in my you know, like now that now that I've actually like sat down and read the chapter a few times, now I wanna talk, you know, some more. About this latest chapter. Uh, the second reason is because we're not gonna get a One Piece chapter until two weeks, and after those two weeks, we're gonna have like one. I think it's gonna be longer than normal. Uh, one longer than normal One Piece chapter, and then the week after that week, there's gonna be no chapters for Shonen Shueisha period, because it's a holiday, I suppose. Uh, you know, like, you know, like one of those days in the year where there are no chapters, or I mean, one of those weeks, and that's gonna be a week where pretty much out of three weeks, we're only gonna get like one chapter, one piece. So I mean, yeah, that's just the way it is. Now, the third reason is because, well, let's be honest here, I am straight up prostate milking this. Sometimes on my channel, the King of Lightning decides to perform. The prostate milk and i'm gonna milk this that's the way life rolls on this channel if you don't know now you know so that being said oh and one more thing one last thing i know it's not one uh one piece related but i do want to give my respects to the ultimate warrior who passed away a few days ago and i think what's crazy is that he passed away like the day before raw i mean the day after raw and the Sunday prior to Raw was the whole Undertaker WrestleMania like insane. He fucking lost. But apparently, during that match, he suffered a concussion from what I hear. So even though Lesnar beat him, it wasn't intentional. Fuck. Ah. So I'm gonna talk about that. I actually have a new channel, uh, KOL Talks, and I'm gonna probably talk about that either like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, Saturday. But we'll see. We'll see. Now, that being said, that being said, this chapter. First of all, let me let me uh, yo, Ace Coon would be proud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Son, Sabo, Sabo looking real good right now. And let me just say this off the gate. Sabo is second in command of the entire revolutionary army. That puts him above Ivankov, as far as I know. Unless there's like multiple second commanders of the entire army, no. I mean, maybe... No. Because I'm trying to think here. Like, is the Revolutionary Army set up in the same fashion as, like, the White Beard Pirates? Where there's, like, the 1st Division and the 2nd Division? No. Apparently, he is second in command of the entire freaking army. So, that obviously means that he is above Ivankov. Because Ivankov, where he stands, I'm pretty sure is, is in inferior position to, to Sabo. So, in that sense, you could say that Sabo is stronger than Ivankov. Okay, fine. Fair enough. The problem I have is Kuma. Because 
when I did the live reaction, I skimmed through some of the comments, and I don't know if Sabo is stronger than Bartholomew, for Christ's sakes. I mean, this dude is massively hacked. He's massively hacked. He can practically warp. I mean, it's not a warp, but he moves so fast where not even a guy... I mean, and I'm not saying that Kuma is FTL. I'm not saying that he's faster than the speed of light. But when he warped right in between Rayleigh and Kizaru, you're like, well, like, what, what the f And Kizaru seemed taken aback, like, oh shit, Barthon. So, I don't know if Sabo is stronger than Kuma. But the thing here is that Kuma is no longer part of the Revolutionary Army. So maybe, and I'm going to throw it out there, maybe Kuma was the former second in command of the army. And then when Ivankov was sent to Impel Down, and when he went, because remember, Ivankov was an Impel Down at some point. I don't know when he was captured, but at some point he was captured and taken. So that means that if Kuma was gone, off doing like. Off being, off being a Shichibukai and, you know, tr doing stuff for Dragon on the side. Almost like a, pretty much like an un undercover agent, Kuma. And then you have Ivanko, who's who, who's in jail. Then that means that Sabo takes over, pretty much. If he gets in, uh, clearly he got that strong. So, that's probably the main reason why he is the number two in the entire, uh, Revolutionary Army, because the other two cats, Ivankov and Kuma, were MIA. Were MIA and on other missions. So, that's the first thing I want to say. The next thing I want to say is that when it comes to when it comes to the whole Usopp thing, he's not that dude. He, he, he's not that dude. But I think what irks me the most, and I explained this, and I kind of explained it in my live reaction, is that Usopp, he didn't do anything to directly influence the situation aside from being his ass murked. But because of the carelessness of Sugar, he, she passed out, and then all the praise goes to him. And the conflict here is honestly a gag situation in a very serious situation. It It's along those lines, pretty much. Where this whole thing has been extremely important when it comes to returning the toys to their normal body, chaos in the country, and the fact that it occurred on a gag moment, and this gag moment is now being exalted because this giant guy, he's our messiah, he's our savior. And everyone's like, oh shit, yeah, who's that? Yeah. It's like, geez. So, again, like, sometimes Oda does it well, sometimes I'm not a fan of it. And in this case, even though what Usa, even though it was funny, the way Usopp was being exalted by those who were just turned back into their original forms. The thing here is that this all stems from a gag moment. And to me, in this per in this particular case, I'm not a fan of it. I'm, I'm just not. Now, when it comes to Flamingo. Okay, so first of all, I was wrong. It wasn't Pika. It was Flamingo himself. Flamingo himself, his head, I don't know what he's doing, but my theory, my thesis, my hypothesis is this birdcage ability allows from some, maybe it's like an invisible entity, maybe it's some kind of like hockey type, I'm, I'm, well, no, no, it's Delphi wise, pretty, I'm pretty sure, but it allows his body to be manipulated like a puppet, therefore, therefore, he can still be alive because his body technically is being controlled 
by something else or someone else, or maybe it's not his real body. Maybe his, maybe his re his real body's elsewhere. Again, I'm not too sure. Because I'm trying to think of why it's called Bird Cage. Because I understand that Flamingo, like he, Don Quixote do Flamingo. Do Flamingo, Flamingo. Flamingo is a bird. And his Bird Cage ability could he goes along the lines of his character scheme. Where he's a bird individual. Like this guy can actually grab on the cloud and start flying around. So, a Bird Cage, I'm thinking like, what? Like, because a Bird Cage is used to trap a bird, obviously. Hence a Bird Cage. So... How does that fit into him being able to survive Kiro Slash? I don't know. So, to me, it's a little bit, mm, again, I'm going to go along the lines that he's being controlled. Like, his Devil Fruit's taking over. Like, again, because it's kind of weird, because it's like, if he was being controlled... Or if his body's acting as a puppet, then who was the puppet master? Like, that's the problem I have with that theory. Who was the puppet master? And, to be honest, I really don't know. I have no idea. So, the only other explanation w would be a hockey one. But, I highly doubt it. I highly, highly doubt it. So, what Flamingo's going, what he's doing right now is, is, is fascinating. But Flamingo is still in the game. And Pika has just come to assist Flamingo. So right now, when you when you take a look at what's going on there in the palace area, you have, on the good side, you have, well, Law still being chained down by the Kairoseki Sea Cup. So he's pretty much, at this point in time, he's unable to fight. But then you have Viola, you have Monkey D, Luffy, and then you have... Uh... Kiros and of course uh, King Riku, those four, and on the opposite end you have Baby Five, you have uh, Glorious who just came in there, you have Flamingo, and then you have because I'm pretty sure Pika's going to reattach Flamingo's head to uh, his body, and then you have of course Flamingo himself. So, right, yeah. So again, Flamingo, Pika, Baby Five, and, and uh, uh, Gladius, Gladius. So you have a 4 on 4 situation going on right now in the area. Zoro, I think, is actually still... He's probably going to... Well, no, he's not going to find him in time because he's going to get lost. Duh. But... Kinemon... I don't know... Because he's trying to find his boy, Kanjiro. However, he may wind up running into this whole mess. And where that goes, I'm not too sure. So, that being said, I'm not going to... I mean, obviously, my... Pro the way I see, obviously, Luffy versus Luffy versus Flamingo. That is the like the end game fight, pretty much in this entire arc. I'm pretty sure, unless someone else comes into the fray, and that's someone else. I mean, the only other person I can see coming into the fray at this point in time is Dragon, which I think would be a bit too much at this point in time. I think Dragon coming in there because he left it to Sabo. So if he's if if, if he is. If Dragon has that much faith in Sabo to look for the weapon production factory or the web or the weapon production area of Dress Rosa, then there's no reason for Dragon to come in there because it's not I me. Mean, I honestly believe that Sabo right now has enough power to, to take on Burgess, Diamante, and Trayball at the same time with ease. I'm going to say it one more time. At this current point in time, I truly believe that Sabo has enough power, skill, to take on Burgess, Diamante, and Treble with ease. And he doesn't even have to use the damn devil for He can just go straight up Ryu Soken and murk them. I mean, Jesus, this dude was able to straight up block... The Surge Elbow of Burgess. Jesus Burgess. Where? This guy. With a simple thrust of his hand. With his simple talon. The talon of the dragon. He breathes. The dragon breathes. And then the ring just shatters. 
And even though we've seen pretty impressive stuff from Diamante, from Treble, from Burgess, it's, it's not near Sabo level with just his fist alone. Let alone name him having the man man no. So yeah, Dragon has no reason to hop in there. But there is an X factor that may lead Dragon to come in there. Because I, 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 unless Sabo willingly contacts Dragon and Dragon's nearby, Sabo's going to have to deal with this X factor by himself. <clears throat> and that X factor is Fujitora, the Purple Tiger. Because this dude, he's raining down meteorites while eating ramen. He's raining down meteorites, and he's lifting up colossal galleon ships at the same time while eating ramen. It's like, bro, like, who are you? Like, you're nasty. And it's funny how apparently Akainu is stronger than Fujitora. So I'm, I'm starting to wonder how powerful did Akainu become over the course of these two years. Because this eating ramen, meteors, galleon ships, like, yeah, I got this. I'm like, dude, like, what the frick, man? So... The X factor here is that at the end of the day, we may see a Sabo versus Fujitora. Because Zoro can't take on Fujitora. I mean, he, he could, but he won't win. That's my take on that. Zoro's not, in my personal opinion, I don't see him being Admiral level just yet. Now, finally, I do want to say that the chapter itself is mainly action chapter. All right, It's mainly an action chapter. The only big reveal in the entire chapter... The only two big reveals was Sabo's face and what he looks like, and the scar, and the pretty much like the same getup. He has the gloves going on. He has the pipe. Uh, and 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 please keep in mind, all right. And another reason why I think that Sabo is probably like disgusting, and he could take on those two guys easy. The entire time that we saw him fight in the Coliseum, he didn't use his pipe. He didn't use his damn weapon. He was just using hand to hand combat. No, no, man. Sabo, I think, just on these notions alone, I think he's easily Admiral level. He may be around Mihawk level, because I think Mihawk, cause, like, to me personally, there is like a gap like between Yonko and then Admiral. And there are certain dudes that fit in between that gap. Like Dragon, oh no, Dragon I think is Yonko level, but where he is exactly in that range, I'm not too sure. But guys like Mihawk. So... Well, actually, now that, I'm, now that I think about it, that's pretty much me saying that Mihawk is weaker than Monkey D. Dragon. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'll leave that for another day. But basically, my thing here is that it's mainly an action chapter. And it's mainly Sabo's face. And what he looks like. Him getting the Mare Mare Nomi. And Flamingo. And Flamingo, him being alive. So the only irritating part. It's funny, but at the same time irritating part. Is the whole Usopp stuff. And after that, it's just fucking money. It's, it's money for days, alright? Money for days. So the chapter reading, I'm not gonna change from what I did for the live reaction. It's gonna, it's, it's still gonna be a yo. It's still gonna be a yo, despite Usopp and me kind of be like, it's funny, like haha, -ha, but and, and uh, you know, haha, haha, uh, haha, mm, ha -ha, no. So yeah, yeah. So again, with that, I'm I'm very mixed feelings, pretty much. But yeah, that's it. So I'm done. That is the actual genuine review. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys really enjoyed. <laughs> so I will see you guys later. Uh, again, no One Piece for next week's. And I mean, that that's really a shame. Because I really want to see what's going on here. And like, you know, continuing here. But also I want to see what's happening with damn Sanji. Because Sanji was taking on Big Mom. He was all confident. Hands in pockets. Like, yeah, counterattack. And it's like, I uh, haven't seen since. So, like, I don't want to see Sanji missing a fucking leg the next time you see him. No, 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 Oda. I, if Sanji, I'm going to come to your house, bro. Me and you, Oda, we're going to have a nice one-on-one. -on -one. All right, a, a nice old-fashioned one-on-one. -on -one. You get what I mean, huh? You get what I mean? Damn. going to have to loosen my shoulders, all right? Practice some yoga so I can stretch out and get ready for the big moment. 
if San loses the damn fucking leg. Or they may do like a, you know, like a backward in time thing where like they go back 30 minutes before all this stuff happened and Sanji and Big Mom and like, or, or if she's even on the damn shit. Again, I'm not for sure. But that being said, I'm done. And she really should be. But that's my take on that. So, again, the chapter rating is still going to be yo. And I will see you guys later. King of Lightning. Be sure to, of course, rate the video, comment, subscribe as always. A very action-packed action chapter with one gripe, but the rest of it was straight up gold. Peace.